I'm going to introduce here the FC factor method, which is yet another method of um, simulating a building's relationship to the ground. Um, there's information in the Jerboa manual and documentation here. Um, it's down in the cluster workflow um, under FC factor method. And you can find more information um, in the big ladder documentation, which I haven't linked here, but I've linked um, a little further down um, in the component documentation here in the note on FC factor method. Maybe I'll link it back up in the cluster workflow. Um, essentially, what this does, and you can read more about this in the ground heat transfer calculations and um, C and F factor constructions um, in the big ladder software uh, uh, engineering reference. You can also find this in the energy plus engineering reference is um, ASHRAE and I believe a California code require um, limits on F and C factors uh, for walls and slabs and what this does is it simplifies your constructions into something like a monolithic construction, um, but accounts for any insulation you might have or any of your sort of construction. It's a simplified method. Um, and the way we do that is essentially, I'll go back down here to um, this note on uh, FC factor method. So what basically what it's looking for I'll zoom in here actually quickly and zoom in, is an F factor um, and a C factor. And I, this maybe isn't the most clear, but um, the F factor, the floor factor is your F and the wall factor is your C. And um, there's several ways to get this, but um, if you're trying to do this based on some um, ASHRAE 90.1 or 90.2, I guess California Title 24, um, you would go to the ASHRAE 90.1 reference tables. So in this case, it's Appendix A 4.2.1 for um, below grade walls and a Appendix 6.3.2, excuse me, 6.3.1 dash one. So those are, um, that's this table. And then um, for heated slabs, it's uh, one dash two. And you'll see here that essentially what it's showing you is the type of wall that you're using. And so, um, you know, this, this actually does not include, you can go uh, click on this reference for the Asher 90.1 um, read version. Um, but this is basically showing you the, um, the C factor that you wanna use um, for all of these different um, wall constructions. And let me see if I can zoom in a little more on this. Let's make it a little easier. So essentially what, is, what this is saying, and actually um, for exterior insulation, so you can, you can use this um, if you're, using say something like a um, uh, masonry wall where you have no framing, um, I believe. And so what you're gonna look at here is saying, okay, I have a wall with no framing. Um, I have a wall with an R10. So my C factor then becomes uh, 0 0.092. So then that then gets input into this wall factor input on the um, on the FC factor pre-process. Now, the same is true for slab on grade floors. I've included the slab on grade uh, screenshot here from uh, ASHRAE 90.1. And so you would say, okay, unheated slab, um, uninsulated, or, you know, for I'm, I'm gonna go with uninsulated. Um, and so I'm gonna put in 0.73. And, um, this all means, so the horizontal, uh, these horizontal numbers essentially mean um, that say, let's say you have an R10 at 48 inches horizontal, you have 
48 inches of insulation extending from the, um, the perimeter, from the outermost edge of your slab into the core. So 48 inches of width of insulation. Um, and then in the case of the vertical, it means you have um, a, a depth below the slab um, of, uh, let's say, 48 inches. So maybe you have a, uh, a footing wall around the edge that's 24 inches. Um, or a slab, for example, whatever. You have 24 inches of um, insulation depth around the perimeter of your slab. So you'd, you would then um, input that into your, um, and I believe that's, I, be, I believe that's right. I always get a little, I, I always get a little mixed up between the, what this vertical means, but I'm pretty sure that's, that's true. Um, and then you input that into the floor factor. And then of course you include the wall height. So once you have those input, we basically can come over here to um, the grasshopper. And so what this um, FC factor pre-process component is doing is it's firstly collecting some of this um, slab and wall data. So this of course is including basement walls if you have basement walls. Um, and then what it's doing is actually taking the, the dry bulb EPW val, uh, values here, and it's finding the monthly mean uh, dry bulb temperatures. So this, this, is, this, is, uh, this is taking, um, feeding dry bulb temperatures in a list of uh, 8,760 dry bulb temperatures into these EPW values. Um, sorry, this EPW values should be a little clearer, um, but this is looking for uh, dry bulb temperatures in Celsius. It's get finding the mean monthly temperature, and then it's offsetting that mean monthly temperature by three months. So that's what this monthly offset is doing. And we can just take a look at that quickly. Um, so if I look here, I'm finding my my so this is an this is an energy plus object, the site ground temperature FC factor method. Um, and if I just change my change this to zero, so what this is then showing from month uh, one, which is January to 12, which is December, um, it's finding the average mean or the mean monthly dry bulb temperature. Um, and so it gets pretty high up in, so this is this is sorry, this is for Phoenix. Um, Looking here, I'll show you the path. So this should be next to the example file. Um, so this is for Phoenix. Um, so this is finding the average monthly temperatures, but the the FC factor method essentially calls for finding the mean monthly temperatures and shifting it forward three months. So um, our ground temperatures are, are sort of uh, lagging behind um, our, um, our um, mean monthly temperatures, dry bulb temperatures. Um, now this is a pretty rough method. I think I'd like to do some playing around with this uh, to see if I can calibrate this a little more. I think there's a way that we can probably blend um, this shifting um, of the EPW values with the undisturbed ground temperatures um, from the EPW. Um, it, it just to give a maybe less extreme, especially in a place like Phoenix, where you have really, really hot summers and you end up with ground temperatures supposedly in the 90s um, or 35 Celsius um, in October, <laughs> which uh, seems a little extreme. So um, that's one way to do it. Another way to do this is to um, just feed in um, uh, custom ground temperatures with this uh, custom site ground temperatures FC factor um, header, if, if, if you so please. Um, regardless, that's what it's doing. That's what it calls for. There's probably a, a, a more accurate way to do this. But um, so we're inputting our building data, then we're also inputting our, our slab, our total slab area and our exposed slab perimeter. So that's taking the, the, the total length of the 
edges of the slab that are exposed to the outdoor air. It's feeding the ground temperature string and the constructions, the sort of modified, simplified constructions um, used for the FC method into um, the uh, FC factor um, IDF maker. We're inputting an already existing IDF. And what this is doing is then modifying the constructions um, for each of your um, each of your building surfaces that have uh, uh, ground um, uh, outside uh, surface condition um, or boundary object, whatever you want to say. So um, it's creating and writing um, this new um, IDF object. I should turn this to run. So when I uh, plug this in, we'll get um, our new uh, Gerboa uh, FC method IDF out of that. And then the idea being that now you can take this uh, outputted uh, IDF path and plug that into the Honeybee um, IDF run um, component. And if we just want to jump over to this example here, um, so this I have a collection of things that are interfacing with a kind of workflow that I envision for this Honeybee. Um, interfacing with, with, with Honeybee is, let me zoom in here, grade 100. So we're basically outputting um, a Honeybee uh, model. So we have our IDF object. And this is just the same workflow I'll set up here. I'm, I have my monthly offset to three. Um, and so now I have my, my new, FC method IDF output. And then I'm plugging that into, um, so this is plugged into the stream filter of one, so we're outputting one and we're, we're feeding this into the um, Honeybee IDF run. And essentially then we're, what we're getting out of this is a new mod newly modified IDF object. Um, so that's, that's all, that's sort of what is going on with that. So. Uh, you know, for example, we could, you know, if we wanted to change this to, oh, I don't know, change this to three or something. That's going to rerun the IDF. It's going to it's going to write a new IDF out of here, and then it's going to run that again through the uh, Honeybee uh, IDF. Uh, we're going to get something slightly different, but probably not that different because I didn't change the depth that much. Um, so that's the big idea with the FC method. Um, and I'll make another video on the on an update for the, where I use this method again uh, with the basement program. Um, but I'll save that for another video.